Hello and welcome to With Something. Welcome to another spectacular tutorial about After Effects. Today we're going to talk about null objects and cameras. If you were like me, you have at one time tried to animate a camera from point to point and gotten some really weird artifacts. Got some weird movement and what you thought you were animating in the points ended up doing something really weird and crazy. So have you ever been working on a project and you had a camera in the space and when you're animating the camera, when you moved along your line, you were getting some funky movement that didn't seem to line up with how you had animated it. So in this example, I have a couple points and I have some movement through it in this three dimensional space. And we'll build that here in the future, part of this tutorial to kind of let you see how I did it. Obviously this is not it for production. This is just for example purposes. So if I select those keyframes here and then go into our graph editor view, you'll see the graphical representation of those points, but you'll see that these are locked together. So in a camera, the position in the X, Y, and Z axis is locked together. So you'll see that if I move one of the points, it's going to affect all of them. So if I wanted to say a smooth change on the X axis and try to change it, it would actually cause all the other axis movements to change at the same rate, which obviously doesn't really help you out when you're trying to animate something very precisely. It comes to text or movement. So the solution to around this is called null objects. So you're probably asking, what is a null object? Well, it essentially is a nothing object. So null, nothing. And what that means is that it has no actual like renderable attributes. It has position, and has rotation and it has those and other similar basic, you know, anchor points and stuff like that, some basic attributes to it, but nothing in it is actually renderable. So if you render this scene, you'll never see it. It is available in 2D and 3D space, which will be important. So we'll create this null here. And then we will create a camera. One is a one node camera, and we can just make this a 20 millimeter camera. Click OK. Now, to create those 3D objects in there, we'll create some simple layer things. But before I do that, I'm going to go over here to my camera control comp and show you an example of it working. So here I threw some rotation on it and some movement. And these are all separate in this space. So now I can create more complicated movements without it doing wonky things. So we'll go back over to our comp here and we can rename this pushing return there and call it null camera. You can name it whatever you want because we're doing your main project. You can do it however you like. So we'll put the camera here. We're going to bring in some shapes. So let's do a shape here. We're going to duplicate that and put these in the 3D space. Move it around, move it back. And then we're gonna do a couple more shapes here. Boom, boom, boom. Change the color, something different. And in this case, it's really more about just allowing you to see what's happening. So we're going to the top view. We can do two views here. We'll go to horizontal, top view, push this one back farther, grab this one, push it farther back as well, grab this one. What was the last one I made right there? Let's see. Oh, and we'll duplicate that one and just move them all back. some reason do 3d space there there we go and push them back push them way way back so we have some level and you can add more but obviously it's just to give you an idea so we're back into our single view camera there so now we have our objects and our camera so I'll pull this back to the top of the stack just for organizational here we go so all you can do is if you go type into effects and presets, X, Y, Z, and you'll pull up this transform and you can drop it onto the null. 
then you can link using the little pick whip here to that null. So we'll call this camera control. Oh. And now, if you move this, you'll see it moves your camera. So what I like to do actually, I'm gonna unlink this really fast and pull up the camera's position and pull up this is position and I'm gonna copy that number and put it into the null. So now, we'll just go to view here. The null is on the exact same spot as the camera. This will be useful because when we go into some of the, and we'll relink these. This is useful because when you go into the null object, you'll see that it actually now moves exactly the same spot. But what's cool is you can actually add in some extra controls here. So if you've never, so this is kind of an extra step, you can actually create kind of a nice camera control here. So you go into expression controls and we'll do a angle control. We can actually take the rotation here, put this into the rotation and grab the camera and you can actually we can actually take the, let's just call this the X rotation and actually tie that to that. So if I click on the camera control again and we'll say X rotation, boom. Now watch, we'll change this number and this will actually rotate this. So what does this X, Y, Z position do? Rename that camera. Mission. Perfect. Well, what this does is, so we're gonna put the camera here. We're going to adjust our Z position only. So we'll put the Z at zero. Add a keyframe. Move to our five second mark. And move this through the shapes. And now if we click U on that layer selected, you'll see we have two separate points. But now the only thing that's being animated is the Z axis position. If I go into the graph view, oops, select these two, and go to the graph view, you'll see the only two points there that have been animated are these. So if we were to add another point in here, and animate that, we're only animating that single point. We aren't now changing other ones. If we go in here now and select the control and add, let's say, a y, an X position, and then go down a little farther and add another one, and then we go out of this view so we can see it better, Hit that one and hit the X position and we'll just move this on the X axis just to the left there. So now we have this and it doesn't take effect to right there, but it continues to go right. So now these points are independent of each other. So now we'll go here and select these and go out to that view. And you can see now I can actually move any of these points around independently of time. So if I don't want something to change or move, I can allow it to do that when I want it to, which is very useful for more complicated things. And what's great is using these expression controls, you can actually add in more control on your camera so you don't have to dig into the settings. So if I went to here and said, oh, I wanna adjust my zoom, you could actually grab that and drop it onto the slider there. And now, you know, it went wonky because technically went to a super wide zoom, but now you can actually have a zoom control on here. So you can see now using this slider to control your zoom, which is very helpful because say you want to do a move and zoom shot. Now you have an easy way to change your zoom. So we go here and now we'll play that really fast. 
and you can see it creates that weird effect. Now, obviously we're kind of just messing around with settings, but that allows you to create independent links and you can also create your own tie-ins to, like I said, the angles here. So you can create very complicated camera movement animations using only this null object. That way, technically, you could reset your camera if you needed to, and you still have all that animation data inside of this null object. It's a relatively simple tool, but by using it in this way, you can create really complicated animations. This is just one of the many uses for null objects in Adobe's After Effects. I hope this was helpful for you today, and hopefully you will please like and subscribe on the video, and look forward to sharing more content with you. And I hope I have also left you with something. Have an excellent day.